Hi, I'm Noah from the Tabula Project, supporting the art of teaching with 21st century innovation. We're turning tablet computers into powerful classroom tools for teaching and learning. Since we launched our peer funding campaign over on startsomegood.com, and I cannot say enough about how great Alex and everybody over there has been to work with thus far, um, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from people. Uh, and the most popular comment has been something along the lines of, I'm into the general idea of what you're doing, you're saying the right things, what you're hoping to do sounds good, but I'm not sure what you're making. Can you tell me you know, the details of what you're making so I can get a better handle on what it is and if I want to support it or donate to your cause? Let me underline from the start two points. One, what you're about to see is not a prototype. These are uh, drawings um, made by a master artist, as you'll see in a second. Uh, but these are kind of schematic drawings walking through a couple of examples of a real-time learning activity on Tabula. Uh, we're not showing you a prototype for the simple and important reason that our whole way of doing this is to get the end users, educators and content makers and students involved in the process as early as possible. Second thing I want to state from the beginning, I can't say this enough times, we don't think that tablets or any other technology are the end all be all. It's a tool. We believe in great teaching and we think that what we're doing can support, amplify and extend great teaching practices. Okay, that said, let's jump into it. Here's the teacher dashboard. Component number one of the tabula system is the teacher dashboard. So let's say this is a physics class, high school physics class, 30 students. Uh, this screen shows six of the students. So for each student, you've got their name, a thumbnail picture, and a little status update on what you're doing, and then what they're doing, rather. So we look down, and Tim, Sally, Aaron, Zoe, Raina, Jared, they're all working with their physics e-textbook. You can see what page they're all on, and there are alerts next to Sally and Jared's names. Why? Well, if we take a quick scan, we see that most of the class is somewhere around page 16, page 17. Sally's on page 3, Jared's on page 49. So in this case, the teacher notices there's an alert next to Sally's name. Tap on Sally on the screen, and it takes you to the alert page. Sally's on page 3, the class average is page 17. Sally is spending about 6 minutes and 21 seconds per page. The class average is right around 2.5 minutes. So here's one of the ways that the technology can amplify good teaching practices. The teacher monitoring to see, is an intervention needed? Is there a student, is there a group of students that need some extra attention while they're working independently? Or the teacher can go and work with a small group and then kind of keep a virtual eye to make sure that students are on task or to see when a student needs some extra attention. In this case, the teacher looks and says, oh, Sally's spending a long time on each page. The tablet is able to monitor that. If you imagine reading on a tablet or an e-reader, you know, you change pages, you can hit a button, but even easier, you can swipe or tap on the screen. So in the background, our system is just measuring how long between page turns. Teacher could just walk over to Sally and ask what's going on, or in this case, example options are send a message, basically an instant message, peek in on Sally's screen to see what's going on. Maybe Sally's spending so long on each page because she's writing copious notes in the margins on the you know electronic textbook or maybe Sally's doodling all over the page so that would be a way to peek in and say you know Sally stop doodling get back to, to reading or wow she's taking a lot of notes maybe I'll send her some extra resources I have and that's the third button there the send button so those are just examples of ways to interact from device to device but again this is just an intervention prompt and the teacher of course could see the intervention prompt put the technology away for the moment and go engage with the student in a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, real-time physical world basis. And this is kind of an easy example to parse, the example of e-reading and interaction, interacting by swiping or tapping the screen to turn pages. But these kind of monitors could be going on in the background of all sorts of activities. The lessons can be planned to leverage the tabula system. And again, that gets back to why we want to work with the stakeholders, the educators, the content makers from the beginning to develop these tools that will actually serve a purpose in the classroom. Another example, let's go back to the student dash, the teacher dashboard here, and everybody, all the students are working in a math app. And we can see that there's an alert next to Zoe's name, there are question marks. So that's an alert that something's gone awry, maybe Zoe left the tabula system and is doing something uh, that's not you know, what everybody else is doing. Or maybe there's a network connectivity error or some other technical error that needs some attention. And then we look at Jared, and Jared is using the Tabula browser, 
and the tabular browser can tell us that Jared is on YouTube.com. So maybe Jared is watching a Khan Academy video that relates to the math lesson, or maybe Jared's watching a music video, which is what some of my students did when I was teaching middle school computers at a lab a few years ago. Let's move on and we'll look at an example of a learning activity planned around a tabular feature, a simple feature commonly known as the clicker. So if you imagine a game show like Jeopardy, where the contestants are all behind a podium, there's a question posed, and when you want to give your answer, you click in, you press the clicker button. Same kind of thing. In this case, we're looking at what a student would see on the screen. Graph the progress of a forward moving car. Three choices, three graphs. Uh, each one showing distance on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. So the first graph, downward sloping line, shows a car that's actually moving backwards, losing distance over time. The middle line is flat, shows a car that is not moving at all, no distance change over time, so it's a car that's staying still. And the graph on the right is an upward sloping line, it's a car that is gaining distance over time. So that is the correct answer uh, for graphing the progress of a forward moving car. So all the students click in their answer, and in real time, the system is able to tabulate the results, and now we're looking at something that could pop up on the teacher screen, which is an alert saying, everything's okay, your class is showing understanding. In this case, 80% of the class chose the correct example on the right, the graph, the upward sloping graph. 15% chose the one in the middle, 5% the graph on the left. But there was a threshold set, either programmed into the learning activity or perhaps custom set by the teacher for this particular group of students, saying, okay, you know, a certain percentage will give me the okay screen, and in this case, 80 is above that percentage. In this case, there are also details buttons that would let the teacher drill down and see, you know, well, that 5% who chose graph number one, which 5% are they? And you can imagine scenarios where there's a little bit of, of data use going on there to track, is it the same kids struggling with the same concepts, or same learners, I should say, struggling with the same concepts all the time? Do I want to group learners together? or set the system up to auto group learners so at the end of the week I can see you know the groups of students struggling with different concepts all sorts of things you can do with collecting this data let's say that threshold for understanding was not met now we get an, inter an intervention alert only 30 percent of the class chose the correct answer the graph on the right five percent the first choice and sixty percent chose the graph that actually shows a car that's perfectly still over time and so that's where the alert crops up. Now, at this point, the details buttons are there. The teacher can choose different methods of intervention, one of which is that the lesson can be planned so that there are slight differentiations on what content comes next, depending on the pulse of the class at these different points. In this case, the uh, intervention point, the threshold of 60% of the, of the students choosing the middle graph, triggers a messaging feature. And so here, a student named Aaron, on Aaron's device, Aaron gets a message that pops up like a sticky note over the activity. Less message from Mrs. Jo from Ms. Jovel, a little shout out to one of my high school math teachers who was a, a great influence in my life. Um, Aaron, you chose the middle graph. The middle graph actually shows. And then there would be some content there, some text or possibly images that would explain to Aaron what the graph he chose actually shows as opposed to what the correct answer was and why. This could be pre-scripted content that is uh, built into the activity. The class could be working independently and then the teacher could write individual messages as they come up to different students and so on and so forth. Lots of different iterations possible. So hopefully that gives you a more in-depth idea of what we're building, why we're building it, and how the technology, the content, and the professional development really all go hand in hand in hand to create the tabular project. It's not just about putting devices in classrooms, it's about the whole package, and it's all designed to support great teaching and learning. So please support us over at startsomegood.com. If you have questions, if you have feedback, if you wanna see more, you can leave comments on our campaign page or just drop us an email, noah at tabularproject.com and uh, we're, just, we're just very, very excited about it. And we appreciate your support and your criticism as well.